Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm back. We are going to, I just used clear tape because really washi tape gets in the way, but anywho. Um, I've traced my pattern for my porch sitter Santa, or whatever it's called, porch greeter. And now it's time, I've already sealed and sanded my surface, and it's nice, and the dogs are running. Um, nice and smooth. And so now you need to get your tracing. We did this in the previous video, so go have a look if you're interested. And you're going to kind of line it up. It's nice when you can, um, oh Lord, they're going at it. It's nice when you can tape it down to the substrate, but you can't always do that. So you just kind of hold it in place. Kirby, come over here. Um, one thing I want to be sure of is when I, this is already pre-cut. Some Usually, like if you were painting it on a plaque, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But I definitely want to line up the tracing lines with the corner here. Actually, I'm going to cut this right here just because, and I glued or taped two pieces together. But I just want to cut it so it'll make it easier for me to find the... I mean, I hope it does, but I just want to find the edge like this. <clears throat> so it's got to sit right there. So that's how, and then this one, it would be helpful if I did this one too. And then you can line it up based on that. I guess I'll do that. And then I'll kill my dogs. No, I won't kill my dogs. I love my dogs. They just always got to act up when I get on camera here. Poor Kirby. She's just overwhelmed. I have a 11-pound a dog and like a 40-pound dog. So she gets overwhelmed. But she's tough. Tough little cookie. All right. So I'm going to use this little cut edge as a way to line this up. Good girl. See, she made it up. She went back for more. But she was just under my desk. And I, oh, Lord. I'm going to need my graphite paper, which I thought was right here. And, of course, it's not. Look, I just found this on the plaid um, <clears throat> website. And it's a, it's a wood-burning mandala pattern. So I am going to find myself a circle that I can do this wood-burning Anywho, I get I get so sidetracked by so much, so much. All right, so I have this big piece. This is uh, actually not a huge piece, but it's um, called graphite paper. Let's double check. I think this might be carbon. Graphite. There's graphite and carbon, and anyway, this will be fine for a painting project. Um, going to use a stylus. So it's a little ball tool, and that's what I like to um, do my tracing with. And you know what I'm just going to do real quick is I'm going to make a line with my pencil and a ruler so that I can just get make sure this is straight. So I'm just going to use my ruler, and then I'll line this up. You know what? I didn't walk them today. And this is what happens because, see, this is what happens when I get busy. I don't walk them. I just let them out, and it's not enough because I need to go run. <coughs> well, Ginny does because she's got so much energy. All right. So now I can kind of line up my tracing <coughs> again. I'm not going to do the entire thing on camera. So I'm just going to get you started. Then you're going to go off the camera. I'm going to go off camera and finish tracing. And I'll show you when I come back. I just want to make sure that his hat is kind of all in there. The shoulders, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. And just get this sort of kind of straight. I think we're good. Then there's mittens down here. You can't really see them. Let me push this up into the shot. I can always put the mittens on separately because that that's okay. 
you know? So let me just, oh my gosh, I'll be right back. All right, I'm sorry. I can't focus when those dogs are running like crazy. So let's do the mittens. So basically what you want to do, just line it up where you want it. And that's where my mittens are going, all right? And make sure that your graphite is uh, right way up because otherwise you'll trace and you won't um, get any result underneath. So I'm just going to go on the top here. and here because it's going to end right there, right? So this is what you end up with. See, I just have that outline there. So now I can paint my mitten and I'll change it as I when I do it because I didn't meet up. So it, it's just guidelines, okay? It's just guidelines. You don't have to don't just paint it where you put it because that's where you put it because it might not look right. So you're allowed to change things and make it look good. And that one looks better. It's not that dark. I mean, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it, but basically there's a mitten there. So I'm, I'm just going to take my pencil and kind of and over here the way this it didn't start here so I'm just gonna start it here alright and you can erase graphite lines so I would just fill that in and make it how you want it um, so there's my sign here and then I have my mittens Alright, so let's go up to the head. The same thing. Really now I'm not as concerned. Just where I put these little um, holly leaves, that is going to matter. So we've already put our line going across. And like I said, the, the edges aren't as important as getting this kind of centered. Make sure everything's where you need it. If a little bit of shoulder isn't there, alright, that, that looks good. Um, I'm going to take my graphite and I'm going to go under my Santa at the top and just put it down and gently trace with your stylus just and I'm not going to do every single line I'm going to do the main so here's his little face lines and then I'm not going to put his eyes on yet because they'll go on top of the face color. So let's put this alright I'm gonna run out of graphite but that's okay so I think um, no I'm not gonna put his nose I'll put his mustache the reason I'm not putting his nose is because I'm going to paint the whole face area with, and actually this little part of the mustache is going to, you'll see. We're going to end up, I don't really need this either because it's all going to be the same color. I'll explain it to you. Just put it on, I mean, you don't, I can't explain it. So here's what I mean. Okay, let me show you something. All right, I'm going to do one more line because this line right here is where the red of the hat will be and the white of the fur. So I need that. And then this little section here I'll make because this is where the, oops, oops, the red of the hat is going to separate from the white of the pom-pom. All right, but here's what I want to show you. When I base this, I know it's faint. I'm going to put all flesh tone in here, and the mustache is going to kind of, I'm going to just go up a little higher. Well, when I paint it, I would do that. I would change it because I like it more even. But even his little 
all this, like I don't need this line at all because this is all going to be white. So you, do you see what I'm saying? Okay, let's look at the picture. See how this is all white? It's all the same color. And we're going to put the lines back on when we start shading because that will give us an indication of where to put our shading color. So all you need is the outline of this to get to separate your flesh from the white, if you, if you get what I'm saying. So don't stress over it. It's fine. Um, I just kind of try to set you up for success and for less fiddliness or, you know. But let's put this back on. I'll do a little bit more. Now for the gingerbread man, um, he's all one color. So I'm not going to trace this little thing yet because that needs to be painted the gingerbread color first. So let me line this back up. All right. Um, okay. So, and I mean, using a bigger piece of graphite would be better, but I'm just going to keep moving it. It's fine. So I can get. No, just move it over this gingerbread kid here so you don't need the eyes yet you don't need any of that because we're just going to base it the solid color I mean I don't really need oops I moved it I don't need the line here either really and I'm going to put the holly berries on after too. So I think I'm just going to... No, I think I'll... Do, mm, it's just harder to paint around them. I'm going to go this way. You'll see why. There's, there's a method to my madness. Trust me. I've done this a few times. A time or two. All right, we got our little gingy. Here's where the sleeve cuts over. I'm not going to put my um, stripes yet. All right, so I think, I mean, I'm, I can do this. Because I'll just go around that. Um, do I want to do... Nope. I'm going to put that on after. I'm going to put these on after gonna put them on after I'm gonna put that on after all right let's move over here and put this other sleeve on because that's a different color uh, ba, 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 ba. so I'm gonna go down actually uh, no I don't think I need it actually cuz cuz all I need is a separation of the white. Okay, so I got to do the beard. That's it. So we're going to do a separation here. Hey, filming of the beard color. And that's it. Yeah, I'm filming. just going to go around this whole thing. All right. So basically that's all we need right now. So if you understand what I'm saying, I'm going to do all we need is flesh here. We'll do the lip after all this is going to be white or whatever color it is. All right. So let's just start. I can't wait. Base coating is fun, but it's not my fave. When we start doing, um, details. I love the details. So I have palette paper. I prefer to use palette paper and I also have shop towels. These are the type of paper towels that you can get in a like automotive supply store and they're just very absorbent. I have my bucket of water here. I have a little bit of Snapple. Mm. Now let's get the directions and it says, first we're going to, it says 
paint the face and the lip. So I'm just going to use flesh tone to paint the face. Uh, flesh tone. I just decided to use, I didn't have um, the Americana flesh tone. I have Delta Ceram coat, so I'm just going to use it. It's, it's a flesh tone, whatever. And you can make your Santa brown if you have brown skin or a more top color or whatever color. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be Caucasian. I'm going to grab my brushes. And I like to base coat with a flat brush. So let's see, I have a couple different ones that I actually bought for um, watercolor, which I've never done. And I like to add water to my brush first, blot, and then pull my paint out of the puddle. Like I just don't use that puddle. I like to use a little bit of a slicker, wetter puddle or tech quality of paint. So by mixing the water and the paint together on my brush, You'll see, it just makes it nice and smooth. So I'm just gonna go in here. It's gonna be hard to see because the flesh color is similar to the color of the wood. But I like to put my paint down in the middle and then I use the chiseled edge of the brush to go around the edge. And remember what I said about when we were putting on the sealer that I don't like ridges. Now is when you'll see why, because I like a smooth result. And I'm, I also said that I would be turning my piece a lot, so I need to move all this stuff off my desk. But I move it around and I get the piece into a situation where I feel comfortable. And keep kind of, but see it's thin, it's not thick. So I'll probably have to put a second coat, but you just want it to be opaque. So however many coats it takes you to get it to be solid, to where you can't see through it, that's where, where you're going with this. You just want to go, I'll read the directions too. I See, I know what I'm doing, but I just want you guys to, um, read the directions and interpret them for yourself because I'm sure um, Renee words it in such a way that you're going to be perfectly fine on your own so if I jump ahead or um, don't explain something correctly it's because I know what I'm doing and I'm excited and this is fun so you can see where I haven't gotten exactly on the line I kinda I don't know I think I wanna go down a little more on this side I'm trying to even it out like by base like I'm gonna go down a little more on this side again it's gonna look cute regardless and then the lip is gonna be the same color but I'm not gonna do the lip right now I'm going to do the coat and the hat. So base the coat, sorry, base coat, the pom-pom on the tip of the hat with buttermilk. Um, what else is buttermilk? Highlight along the outside edge of the pom-pom, undercoat, the hat and the coat and sleeves with Hauser green light. What? Undercoat the hat and the coat and sleeves with Hauser Green Light. Now this, she may be doing this because the stripes will be right there, So we're but also because red, it's not, um, there's something about red that if you put something underneath it, the red turns out redder. So I'm gonna do what she says. Hauser Green Light. I have Hauser Green Medium, Dark, and Light. And I'm really gonna shake these up. And then she, what color did she say this was? Um, buttermilk. I'm just erasing, but the paint will go over it. So I'm going to get a little bit of buttermilk. I'll do that first. And then what, it, oops, I just touched that. What is this going to be? This is going to be that, um, guess what? I ended up finding the, ca the camel. So I'm just going to use camel. I had it. I knew I had it too. Um, where the heck is it now? Here it is. It's camel, but I'm just going to use it. I don't particularly like it. I'll end up going over a lot 
with white to make it whiter but um, all right so I'm just going to use that same flat brush and I'm just going to do this little pom-pom and I think I might bring it around the sides so I'm kind of let's go I'll let you come in and see a little closer because see how I'll even out like so I'll just start here and make sure it matches up see how it doesn't exactly match up but I'm going to make it match up and paint over that. I did the same thing. I just made a slicker, wetter puddle right next to the, because I use the water that's in the brush and kind of mix it with the paint. I'm going to go around the edge. Now the one thing I didn't do in the prep that she suggested you do was to stain the back. I may stain the back and I may not, but Renee may sell her pieces. She's um, a teacher. She takes them to trade shows and has them out as examples or samples. So she wants them to look finished for sure. I am not, this is mine. I'm going to be using this on my porch and you're not going to see the back and if you do I don't care but I probably will finish it but that you know it depends. It depends if I feel like it or not. Because I might not. All right, so that's that. And then we're going to undercoat, it says, shade the pom. Okay, I don't want to do that highlight. No, I don't want to. Undercoat the hat, coat, and sleeves. So I'm going to look at my picture, and I'm guessing this is the hat. The coat is going to be the bottom piece of wood that Joe's going to cut for me, and the sleeves. So I'm just going to do all this red and all this and, and this. So it's, it's Hauser light green. So it's going to look funny, but I think there is a method to her madness. So let's just do it. Let's just do what she says. And again, I just rinse the same brush, blot, and then I'm going to pull a slicker, wetter puddle and paint the everything else this green color. And I'm going to go around the edges. I love using a flat brush to um, base coat, but you guys might prefer an angle brush or a filbert brush or a round. I mean, a round would just be too small, I think, unless it was a really big round. Because I like to cover a little more space. And I'm a very fast coater, a um, painter, as you see here. I'm, I do everything fast, pretty much. So, um, can you see, am I in the shot? Yes. And I'm gonna make this a little wiggly if, if it's a little too straight because that's supposed to be fur, this part. So it doesn't have to be straight. But I don't want ridges. I did a good job of connecting this to the cutout. So I just want all those ridges off. The other thing about it is your it'll dry faster. So you could I'd much rather do two thin coats than one big thick coat that it takes much longer to dry and um I don't know. I just prefer it. It just looks so smooth and nice. Now if you can't get into this tighter area here with this bigger brush, you can switch brushes, but I just like to use the chisel edge and just take my time. And there you go. Now it looks funny because it's green, but it will be red. And I think this way those green stripes are going to be done for us. So I'll have to trace on my stripes I'm gonna need more green hopefully I'm in the shot and see how I'm not being real specific but I'm making sure it's all flat I keep going back over where I put the paint down because I don't want ridges so I go brush right over those ridges and that way it 
comes out nice and smooth. And when you rinse your brush, I want to tell you, don't mash it down in your container, whether it be a regular cup or something like just a glass that you use. Don't mash your brushes down like this. You just want to go gently to keep the bristles in order. You don't want to, um, now why is that, okay, that's a berry. So I'm just going to go over here because I'll bet you she'll have us undercoat the berries as well because they're red. So to get them to be nice and bright red, it looks like she's undercoating them with green, which I've never done, but I'm just adding a little more water to my brush because um, I want it to be slick. And I'm going to try and make sure I get up against this sign that Santa's holding. But I don't want to leave a ridge. I'm repeating myself a lot, but this is, you know, what can I tell you? Hi, Kirby. There was a little um, paint boogie there, so I just picked it up. All right, and then we're going to come over here. And then I have to do this little section here because that's all included in the jacket and the sleeve and the jacket. I just got a little more paint. So that's it. So I'm going to go off camera after this and I'm going to paint. I'm going to get another coat. I'm going to do all my white or whatever color it is. I'm going to do him. I'm going to get everything base coated. So everything's going to have at least two coats. Um, and be ready to go for us to do the next step. Oops, see I kind of cut his little arm a little bit, but it doesn't matter. So it's a little thinner there. Also, I want it to be super cute, so I want it, um, I want to be able to focus, and I think when I'm filming, I'm just a little more rushed, because I'm always thinking about how long I'm taking, and, you know, I don't want it to be long, and so there's something to be said for me just sitting here and being able to do it at my own pace. Kirby, what are you doing? But see how you can just get in right into those nooks and crannies with the corner of the, um, and this is a flat, this is a number eight flat, Simply Simmons. I don't know what this is over here, but for whatever reason I traced it this way, it's getting painted this way. I think that's just holly leaves or something. We shall soon find out. I got a little green on there because I put my finger in it. But that's fine because I'm going to paint. That sign gets painted Williamsburg blue and I think I ended up having that too. So I found some colors that I, I knew I had them. I don't love, I think. So another tool that you should have in your toolkit is a good old Q-tip. I noticed something um, over here as well. Right here, I kind of went on to the um, white. Uh, so that's what the, oh, let me go back up, sorry. But you're starting to see the shape. Now what color is the little gingy? gingerbread base coat with honey brown. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, there. That's just a holly leaf right here. So I'm just gonna put out some gin. I mean, some honey brown. Just do the same thing. So what I how I clean my brushes? I go back and forth. There's this little like grid on the bottom. Oops, and I got water. But you just go like that, and it kind of gets it out of the ferrule. And uh, but you never want to jam down your bristles so that they um, see. And it's getting clean. I have a loose hair here or there, but that's not a biggie. And then I make my little slicker wetter puddle. And I'm just going to go right in here and get this gingy on here. I guess maybe Renee likes to do one thing at a time. My preference is I like to get everything base coated. Um, at least that's how I've always done it in the past. But, I mean, who knows? That's not to say I wouldn't change it up and do it a different way. But... So in other words, she's going to paint this pom-pom, highlight and shade it, and be done with the pom-pom. Then she's going to undercoat this, do it, do it, do it, be done. You know what I mean? So, uh-oh, I had a water droplet on my face. But for some reason, I'm going to at least get one coat on my little, just so we can see everything. I get excited when I can see what it's looking like and then we can put the pattern completely on and then start shading and highlighting plus I start using a different brush when I'm shading and highlighting like right now I'm doing everything with one brush and I mean I'm going to use one brush when I'm shading because I like my angle brush But see how I put, there's a little paint boogie. I'm just going to pick it up if I can. Um, how I keep moving around, put the paint down, and then go back and smooth all the ridges. I don't, I don't like ridges, you guys. I don't know why, but I don't. And it's going to look cute even if you have ridges, so don't worry about any of that stuff, right? Just have fun. I got a little like on the beard, but you can get it off. But I'm also going to put white there. So, but see, it's because I'm hurrying. I am. I'm really kind of rushing. So, I should probably stop and go off camera and finish. And your brush holds so much paint. Like, I have a lot of paint in my brush because um, I use the whole brush. I don't just use the tip of the brush. So I'm able to go a long way with the process. You know, like, I can, I'm still pushing paint out of this brush. And I'll just go reload the tip of it when I want to get in um, and do these edges. But for the most part... I use the whole brush because it holds a lot of paint. So you don't have to keep reloading. I'm a little shaky. Not too bad. If you get it all nice and smooth, it all dries nice and even. I wonder what color this, this and the bottom and the gloves, this and the gloves, I think are going to be. So that would be called hair, mustache, and beard. Hair, mustache, and beard are buttermilk. Base the cuff of the hat, the mittens, and the fur trim piece with camel. So this, the mittens, let me do that. 
So this is how dark this is going to be. I can't, all right, should I just go off camera? I'll come back when I'm done base coating. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I'm about to do the beard and the mustache. And see, this is what I mean. So I didn't need to trace or put those tracing lines on at the moment because this is all white. Then I'm going to trace on the lines after when we have to shade. So right now I can go all along everywhere the beard's going to go. So And the hair. And actually this is the same color as the pom-pom. This is the buttermilk. So I'm just going to go up against the face with this. Again, trying to keep the ridges to a minimum by just going, putting the paint down and going back in, making sure I turn the piece as well. And see, I have a ridge there. Sometimes if I get a ridge, I'll just move it with my um, finger too. But if you load your brush with just a little bit of paint and a little bit of water, it stays thin enough that it won't be a big, huge ridge. It'll be a nice soft one, if, if at all. So this is that, all right? And then I was gonna show you, I think I'm gonna do another coat, definitely another coat on the gingerbread and maybe the blue but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the red on camera because I want you to see that. Um, I might want to do another coat because if if the stripes are gonna be green, they definitely need another coat. So I'll probably do another coat of the green off camera. But I just wanted to show you this is why you don't need to put all your lines on all at once. And I mean sometimes I don't explain myself very well, but. I, I'm just trying to save you the, you know, the per, the pain in the neck or the extra time or whatever it is, and sometimes those graphite lines don't come off well or they're, you know, you got to cover them up. So if you don't put them down in the first place, you're ahead of the game. So, um, all right, I'm gonna finish that up, and then the other thing is. Don't forget to go around the sides because I went around the sides of my sign but I haven't gone around the sides of the green yet or the mittens. So I'll, I'll do that on the second coat. All right, so I'll be back. Okay, I feel like it's all based in. Um, you know, it's not perfect, you guys, so don't beat yourself up. I say to myself, no ridges, but I get ridges. So don't feel, and this is just a cutesy, Thing that you're gonna enjoy on your front porch so don't worry about any little this isn't like just like in mixed media this isn't the focal point right like it's a whole blended thing so don't look at one thing right um, I left the gingy a little bit sheer in some spots because I like that because it's a cookie and it might have it's an uneven textured thing I think that gives it a little extra pizzazz. That's my take. So I didn't base that in solid. Um, I went over the green twice because I have a feeling that those stripes will be done. I went on the sides, so all my sides are done. And now I'm just gonna take this eraser and just see if some of this um, graphite will come off. Anything that may be not covered with paint but it looks like it's kind of um, been covered. So no worries. The next thing I'm gonna do is make sure it's dry. Oh, I also painted the base, this, pe this piece. This is gonna be his little feet fur. Um, but I'm gonna let this dry fully and then I'm gonna come back and, oops trace back on the, some of the details. We're gonna put on the berries and 
the next layer of details, all right? So his face, um, his nose, his lips, his mustache, all that stuff. So you can go ahead and do that. And when I come back, I'm going to have that all traced on. So you just want to line everything up where you want it and then stick your graphite under and trace it on. All right, so I'll be right back with that done. Okay. <coughs> so there's two ways you can go because I have, uh, I don't know if they consider this white graphite and black graphite. Let's see, I have the packages here. Gray, maybe it's called gray, gray and white. All right, but for our beard, I'm going to line it up so it's much easier to see where everything should go because you have color under it now. So just get it on there. I hope I don't stick my head in the way, but I want to make sure I get it correct. Maybe a tiny bit down. I think, I think we're good. And I'm going to stick the, let's see, I'm going to go with the gray. And we're going to do the face. Oh, this is exciting. So I have my stylus. And I'm not going to push real hard. Just enough so that I can tell where my lines are going to go. I want to do the bottom of the mustache. And the lip. See, I push hard no matter what. A nose. We got to give him a nose. And a lip. Oh, I moved it. It's all right. Some eyes. And I guess I'll put a couple lines for the brows. Just, um... An indication but I hope I want to erase these um, what else do I want to put let's have a look at that so the brows didn't really show up I wonder why because this is kind of doubled up here take this if I take that off I'll rip it but I think I just I just needed to press a little harder because it's two layers of um, actually I don't need it I don't need it I just want to uh, because I can wing that stuff so I don't get caught up in that all right so now I'm gonna do the gingerbread and I think maybe I'll use the white so that you can see the difference when you're using that see but you can see his face I don't need that line down the middle I think, I think that's it. I think that's all I needed. See how we lined it up pretty good? You can't see it. It's too dark. Um, all right, so I'm going to stick this under here and do our little gingy. It's a little awkward because I'm <coughs> holding it in place with my hand. All right. As long as enough of it's under the gingy. So I'm going to give him his little eyes. I don't really need to put this on here, but I guess I will. Gently, gently, gently. Um, I think I'm going to put... I don't know if I have that. Let me... Okay, I didn't um, paint that yet. Dang it. 
I'm just going to use the black graphite, but look, so you can see the white graphite, but I'm going to use the black, well, it's called gray, because I want to be able to see it on the um, white too, because I'm going to do these berries. So I'm going to go on the berries. Uh, I think I already, and this one, and this one, I got a couple over here. I'm gonna, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna put the stripes too. Um, ba -ba -bum -bum. I think I have all of the holly berry, I mean holly leaves. Did I do that big one? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if I put this little. Alright, so I'm gonna do the stripes on this sleeve because I think we're going to be basing some of these red or some of the spots my nose itches um all right And I'm going to move it over to here. Whoops. All right, so you can see, oh, one thing I forgot was right here to create like his little where his jacket goes. I'll put it back on and do it because I could, a lot of times I can freehand it or you know, wing it I say or eyeball it, but this is easy enough to just put on. Hey Curb. Um, just stick this under here. Oh, so awkward. So this line right here, there's just, a, this is kind of where his chest meets his arm. That's it. Because this side you won't see because it's underneath. Alrighty. And I didn't finish this little guy, but I will be able to wing that. So let's go back to our directions. So the lip, I'm going to need to base coat the flesh color. So that little lip right there will get based in. And then I'll probably, let me look at the picture. But there is, generally there's just like a dark area in the mouth. So I'll figure out whatever color that is. Um, the, the coat and the hat. Transfer the stripes and Base coat the red areas on the sleeves and the hat with country red. I want to do that because I want to see it. So I want to do that right now. I'll go off camera and I'm going to do that and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay. The holly leaves were actually Hauser medium green. So I went over at least two coats to get them opaque and then 
the berries I undercoated with green and now I'm going to come back with the country red and I just wanted to do that on camera because it's so gorgeous. and I think I don't think I'm going to do a second coat of the red I think it's kind of opaque let me try and zoom in a little bit I'm using a round brush and the same way I always put the paint down in the middle and your circles can grow on you so take your time and just walk it out to the edge a little bit of water on the brush to keep that paint moving to keep it slick um, turn your piece oopsie Kirby's there and be careful because like I said and I put the main paint in the middle then I wiggle it towards the edge but see how that covers so nice over the green I knew she was on to something I knew she had a plan oops it's gonna grow a little cuz I'm trying to go trying to cover that green um, now here I'm gonna go up against like I could probably I think this needs a little more over here and I don't like a round brush necessarily but I'm just putting a little extra coverage I like a round for doing circles that's basically it but look how that green undercoating who knew I knew I knew that you can do an undercoating of for red to make red really pop but I didn't know green I might have this has been fun because I haven't painted in so long so I'm just getting all this um, actually this is red too so I can just go straight across the sign and up to and I prefer to use a chisel a, 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 see because it kind of it didn't stay straight I have a much easier time when I use a flat brush because and I'm just pushing it off because I can really get right into that corner oh itchy nose but I like to use a round on the on a round I don't know why because I can still um, use a flat to base coat around I certainly can but I just figured I'd do it show you what it's like to have options um, you can flatten out a round brush and get it to have a chisel edge but it's just not the same I like to use the front of the chisel that's how I painted all those holly berries I'm sorry holly leaves all right and I mean it looks a little bit wonky here hold on I gotta fix this I don't like that I'm grabbing a q-tip and I'm going to just push, push back up, pick it up. And just get back, get my shape back a little bit. I don't know why, it just bugged me. Hold on, curb. Still doesn't seem round. That's the trick with circles. You gotta be, it's hard, they grow on you. All right, that's it. That looks good enough, right? I mean, they're kind of touching. Um, Love it. So let's go up. Let me just see. I ended up, you have to go around the edge too. Follow the, ed follow the stripes around. I brought the red out on the edge. I'm coming, I'm coming girls and I put my lips on I think I'm gonna do another coat and then we're all based in that little mouth is probably gonna take some red in the back of it to get it um, 
to have a shade inside, like a little tongue or a little whatever. Holy cow, Matt's lifting weights. And that went clunk. I don't know if you guys heard it. Um, and I def I got one ridge, but that's about it. I think I could put his eyes on and stuff like that, but I'm going to wait till tomorrow. I'm kind of tired. And also, um, I know this is going really long, but I wanted to show you that you can... This white eraser is working a little bit better to take off the um, graphite lines, but it's not great. So I have a feeling that, um, what am I, this is charcoal or graphite? I keep getting mixed up. This is graphite. So maybe charcoal comes off better. The white came off pretty good. But the black isn't really coming off great. But by the time I shade everything, I would like to lighten this up a little too. Like, just go over it and try to take it down so that it's not bright. That's wet paint. See, it's not really coming off. Let's try the pink eraser. Oh, the pink eraser works better. I just want it to be lighter. I don't like it that I made it so dark because it will show. I'm gonna just be shading around that, but um, here, let me uh, just dry that mouth a little bit. I don't wanna erase it. I think the pink eraser works better. Yeah, the pink eraser is doing much better than that other one, which is just a regular pencil eraser. So I have a lot of different, I have a gum eraser. I have tons of different erasers, but I really don't like, I don't want it to be super dark. I just want a hint of where I'm going to go with my shading. Even on the nose, let me take it down a little. Just keep it super light. Because I can still see it. You guys might not be able to. All right. I'm happy. So this is practically done. I'll be done. I'm excited. I think I'm going to finish it tomorrow. I have some stuff to do in the morning. But then I think I'll come back and um, be able to finish it up. OMG. It works up really fast. So I think I also have to find a welcome stencil. And that's it for now, guys. All right, I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching.